ओम ज्ञान तिमिगंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकय चक्षुरन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः जय जयंतो यो डिस्कसिंग अबाउट preaching in some areas of the world where iskon has very little presence mainly the arab world and the, the whole muslim belt from north africa right through to afghanistan and pakistan all these countries so we were discussing about various strategies and this and that but <coughs> It's obvious that the the point came out in the course of our discussion that it's obvious that there's there's no preaching without book distribution. The idea that we'll just go and make friends and meet people and preach to them but without the books and then there's a big hole. There's no basis and it's just what what I shall do to spread Krishna consciousness. But rather the as, as proper said if If we give the books that something substantial. Another very difficult field, China. It's difficult now. It's much more difficult than those days when Robert told him about Krishna Mahaprabhu in China. It was so difficult that relationships between America and China were if anything worse than that with the USSR. It's pretty difficult to imagine. And no, no American had been there. It was just like the worst, worst kind of. relationships so that there are in many countries in the world have such bad relationships now as America and China had at that time so probably just telling some Marcus Rush to, to go there and preach and how can I go and probably said some are other things get the books in if you come for the books should come so the pre- preaching is the essence of this movement and there's no preaching without for distributing Robert's books there are many forms of preaching you can meet people and like that make friends and encourage them to chant but they at least they have to get the books so they'll never understand what is Christian consciousness without reading Robert's books and another thing is that uh, we can't really expect to have any impact in a country unless books are distributed I was just in a in one country where actually there have been quite a lot of devotees made there, there are quite a lot of Hindus in that country but it's a predominantly uh, Muslim population so until recently they didn't have books in the main language of that country and people they don't so much have a habit of reading anyway so it's only in the last really in the last two years that they've had any books and you see the effect that because of their piety and their hindu background it's been easy to relatively easy to um convince people to chant hari krishna but my analysis of that of the other few who have been to that place is that they've always been mostly on a very near fact platform because they don't read the books so the books are required we were discussing about We, we came to the conclusion in our meeting about the preaching in Muslim countries that it was a far-off conclusion. It's a tough job. It's difficult. It's damn difficult. I mean, just for instance, in Pakistan, there's a law. If anyone preaches to a Muslim to try and convert him, then the only sentence that can be given is the death sentence. And there's no appeal either. So that's just if you make it to the court because you probably won't make it to the court anyway. The, the sentence will be that will be uh, the sentence and the punishment will be executed <laughs> before you even have a chance to go to the court. So considering how difficult it is to be a preacher in these countries it seems almost impossible. But then again it comes if the books go that they will have their effect. Just like uh, in Russia, in the bodies, and in the USSR, underground, they were distributing books. Somehow or other, the books were making the bodies. And we see that definitely the books have a very powerful effect. And I always say this because it, it strikes me every time, all the time, that preaching here in India 
Bridging means we say we're bridging, but actually we should know that we're simply trying to be instruments. We are not the doers. We are not the ones who are changing people's lives, but the knowledge that we have received and we are trying to implement in our lives, we are trying to give to others. So here in India, I was, first of all, uh, I, I joined a preaching mission here in India in 1977. So, there's a lot of difference between then and now. In the whole attitude, or the, the whole outlook of the Hindus, Hindu people in general, in India. At that time, 1977, the years following that, it was difficult. In many ways it was difficult, much more difficult than now. Everything was more difficult. Um, and preaching was more difficult because as soon as we opened our mouths and said, Krishna is the Supreme Person of the Godhead, immediately objections. Almost everybody was a committed by a body. That was the situation. But nowadays, it's... Uh, I mean, of course, there's still plenty of Mayavadis. And more or less everyone's influenced by Mayavadis, either directly or indirectly. But nowadays, we don't get really so much opposition. It's people can accept the, the, the same population that uh, what a generation on. The, the, the proposition that we presented that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God and the Supreme Absolute Truth is a person. Not all gods are the same. Krishna is supreme. People generally are ready to accept. In the, or many people are ready to accept. And we see that so many people are taking up Krishna consciousness seriously in India, becoming initiated devotees. So I can ascribe this to the preaching of Islam, and particularly, it's what is that preaching that has changed the way of thinking of the people? It's not the buildings. People come and see the nice buildings. It's attractive. They see the deities and they say, that's very nice. But what is changing their way of thinking is the books. It's, it, the books get the knowledge, just like... Uh, many times, devotees ask me to write a book against Mayava, because they're not writing books on different subjects. But I was telling them, there's no need. We already have it. It's called Bhagavad Gita as it is. There's practically on every page, Prabhupada is smashing my blood. So, I, I've written other books on topics that Prabhupada has discussed, just like Brahmacharya and Krishna Gautas, or the Beginner's Guide. Bringing together instructions that Prabhupada has scattered throughout his books and, and in his verbal uh, communications. But this Bhagavad Gita as it is, it's, it's really Prabhupada is near Vishri Shashunya Bharati past chapter Vishita. Not only the West, everywhere. And again and again, of course, in Bhagavad Gita itself, Krishna smashes the Mayavadis. But if you have a Mayavadi commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, I, 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 don't, I don't know how they get away with it. It's Avyaktam Vyakti Mahavanam Anyante Mahavadutaya. Krishna directly says, that anyone who thinks that my personality is manifested from the impersonal, they're just a complete fool. Krishna says it directly. I don't know how the my body is misinterpreted, but somehow they do. So, and we find that even this morning, after I did the class, the Russian class this morning, one man came up to me, this Bengali man, and said, well, you know, I'm become confused, I can't really understand this. So I was telling him to read, have you read Bhagavad Gita as it is? He said, yeah, I read Bhagavad Gita. I immediately understood. He had read Bhagavad Gita as it is, just the way he said it. Again, last night someone was telling me about all these dreams they were having, and they're chanting Hare Krishna. And I asked him, have you read Prabhupada's books? He said, not much. I said, I know. <laughs> you can tell by the way people talk whether they're reading the books. So, we're distributing these books, and even, even among our devotees, there's a lot of difference between those who read the books and those who don't, isn't there? There's a whole difference in alpha. So, among the public in general, we're distributing these books too. 
those who read their consciousness has changed and we can see that there's a there is mass effect. I know that uh Riddlebaki Prabhu is a strong believer in this. You might you may say that, oh you know what? He's been this journey books for thirty one years, you know, yeah. Why bother, you know? What's the point? You know, that still America didn't become Krishna conscious. But uh, I know I read that interview with Chandra Shekhar did with you that uh, he's a strong believer in the principle that these books are having their effect and the time will come when that will be seen. Prabhupada said that we should believe that it's not just a brutal but it was that is a problem. He believed it, and that's why he distributed the books. That they will have their effect in due course of time. They are having their effect. That uh, people that, just like we see all over the world also, we were, I was hearing some stories from Australia in the early days, how it was so difficult, how people didn't want to see us, or they, they, were, they had a very bad opinion of our movement. But uh, nowadays, it's uh, even for a long time you know, that uh, people are never, not everyone, but many people are, they appreciate our movement and they like to take our books. So that we can say that's the effect of uh, festivals and prasad distribution also. But uh, one thing we should never, never underestimate the, the, the effect of this book distribution. We should, we should never think that it's, it's just something that someone should do, or if you feel like it. We should always remember, even if it defies our intelligence, even if we can't understand, this point we should accept, that is very pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. And that in itself, we should, that should be a, in itself a motivation for us to go on with this. And may say, who am I to say all these things? Just like, Vijay Prabhu was introducing me that well, I used to listen to your books back in the early days. Actually, Prabhupada Prabhu asked me the same question this morning. Well, you used to be a book distributor, didn't you? And I said, well, I, I don't think I stopped being a book distributor. That uh, maybe there are different ways of doing that. Um, up until recently, I used to always distribute, when I'm on the trains, I'd be distributing on the trains, traveling. And then, uh, keeping books and uh, generally on programs we're always distributing books after lectures, distributing books. And also, uh, there's another way of distributing books also that uh, I have one technique which you might not be able to emulate this at the present time, most of you. I get my disciples to do it. <laughs> Send them. Who, who are my disciples here distributing books? A few hands. There's some more others also. I have a technique, it's called Go to the West, pick up brahmacharis, bring them here and send them out on book distribution. It's, it's good. It's good for them and it's good for the preaching here also. They learn many things also. They don't realize it at the time, but when they go back to the West, they realize that, well, we learn a lot of things. That was one thing actually they were saying to me that, uh, oh, it was very inspiring to see somebody devotees here dedicated to book distribution. At the same time, we really need to organize different, uh, as far as techniques and everything. In India, it's actually, it's, uh, the technique of book distribution is somewhat different. Not somewhat different, it's very different. It's, uh, in, the, in the West, we're dealing with a whole different mindset. So, uh, there is tremendous scope here in India. Actually, India, almost every year, is number one in book distribution. And we could put that down also to the... It's a favorable situation, no doubt. But I'd just like to let you know that, actually, um, we do a lot more books than we are reported. Because most of the temples don't report. So there are a lot more books going out than even are reported. That's one thing. Um, all you fellows here in Prashantra and Company. The scores, and you never send your scores at night. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little difficult because, uh, why is it? It's not impossible, but 
we do this with many, many varieties of books. When we go, because we, in India it's, it's different to in the West, but we have, or the BBT in Bombay keeps, in all the, mostly in all the languages, unless the local BBT is really spaced out, which is not unheard of. But uh, at least Bombay, the, the books that they distribute, they keep all the books in stock all the time. They have all the, all the books in English and Hindi and Gujarati, Marathi and Telugu, whichever are printed. Or actually in all those, in English, Hindi and Gujarati, we have all the books. Marathi is catching up, Telugu is catching up. But they keep all the books in stock because going out and meeting people, we have book tables and they may be attracted to different varieties of books. So are we, they sell them a set of books or half a set or whatever. We, we, we show so many books. So it, it can be a little difficult to keep track of, you know, which one is small and maha small and medium and big and maha big and all this kind of thing. So uh, a lot of distribution is going on here and the basic principle of a book distributor, I mean, it, you may say it's easy, well, here compared to the West, but there are, there are austerities here also, just like being out in the heat all day. Even if people are somewhat people, they're not always very people, maybe a tour they are. But uh, many places we go, people, they, you know, they, we're giving them a book, and we're asking for their money, and they don't want to give their money. They, uh, they might, so many times, it's not so easy also. But uh, the, the basic, uh, basically the, it, it takes commitment to, to go out every day. And it's not only that Maya's in the West, although it would appear that she's uh, got a very strong foothold there as compared to India. But uh, Maya's working here also in the mind of the book distributor. Don't go out. Don't do book distribution, relax a little. So the same kind of maya has to be overcome for the book distributors here. And uh, other than maya has so many ways of working. Also, I was had some realizations from Vedupati Kapoor this morning that uh, I was just introducing one of all these in the He's been distributing books. This is so and so does. He's been dis distributing books for four years here in India. And before that in Russia. And then I was asking people about the book. Uh, how many years have you been distributing? Tell me what he said. By, he said, by your mercy and the mercy of Prabhupada and of all the Russians. And that's why he's still distributing books. Because he doesn't think that I am doing it. If we think that I am doing it, then we can't continue to do it. But if we think that uh, let me just be an instrument in the, in the plan of Srila Prabhupada and the Brahma and the Acharyas and Krishna, then it's possible to continue doing it. But as soon as we think I am doing it, then it becomes, then, then we're separated from Krishna by thinking I am the doer. We do the mercy doesn't come. And then we feel frustrated because we're thinking, I should be doing it. Why can't I do it? I want to do it. I can't do it. And then we come to frustrated and then we don't want to continue. But as long as we're thinking that, let me be an instrument. And thinking that, let me pray for the mercy of the Vaishnavas that I can do it. That I cannot do it. That I can be an instrument. Then uh, the mercy flows through and we're able to continue. I thought it was a little, uh, it's a little strange because he's asking for my mercy. But then he's doing the, the, the more service, much more than I'm doing. And that's certified by Prabhupada. Prabhupada said that, that when uh, one devotee wanted to take sannyas, there was some mention of him taking sannyas. Prabhupada said there's no need for him to take sannyas because by distributing books, so many books every day and uh, inspiring others to do so, you do more than any other sannyasi. So as, because you are very humble, which is a qualification of a preacher, a preacher has to be humble to accept, to tolerate all the difficulties, or all the abuse that people may give you, or the, the rejection. 
So, because uh, you're very humble and you're asking me to speak to you. But actually, I should be begging for all of your mercy because you are doing that service which is more pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. I can, I can have the service of uh, apparently being the guru to these prabhus who are doing the service, the greatest service which was pleased Srila Prabhupada so much of distributing his books. So I, I come here to address you, but I should simply beg for your mercy that I always remember and always be engaged in uh, the Sangitan mission and understand that there is no preaching without distributing Shiva Prabhupada's books. So there may be so many other activities, but without this, there won't be any real focus unless we're doing what Prabhupada stressed so much, unless we're giving these books of knowledge, then where is the preaching? Because preaching means to, to give knowledge, and the books have the knowledge. So if we're not distributing these books, if we're not keeping the, the books, the focus in the center, then so many speculations come. And we're just, we're just preaching on a, on a practically a sentimental so we can preach on the sentimental platform also. But uh, unless we stress take these books, read these books, then people will never become fixed and steady in Krishna consciousness. And those who understand the value of these books, then definitely they're going to want to distribute them. It's... Uh, who is that? That's in the uh, nature of book distribution? One of the devotees was asked, how do you get, where do you get the inspiration to go out every day and distribute these books? He said, from the books. You read them every day, and when you read them, you want to distribute them. That's the, that's the natural, it's, it's natural for, for a, anyone who has any spark of life. Prana, chinta, shehitu, pracha. That when we read these books, the problem is, it's so wonderful. Everyone should, everyone should have this. Everyone should have these books. The natural desire to spread this knowledge. Kirtan is the natural function of one, of one who has heard properly. Prabhupada said, because I heard properly, therefore I can preach nicely. Because I did shraman nicely, therefore I can do kirtan nicely. I can preach. So if, if we are regularly in contact with the knowledge in these books, then it is the natural function of the soul, the purified soul, to want to share that knowledge with others. So, what shall I say to you? It's a special group. Everyone's supposed to distribute books, but those who are distributing books, there's, there's this special rule about them. What do you say, Mani Dhaka? He's running all over the, running all over Europe. Funny, just like Papa used to say, where is book? Where is book? He, 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 whenever the BBT devotees would come, he would say, where is book? Don't come and see me unless you, every time you should bring a new book in Hindi. So that was it. That's how we could get help at Dash at home. But he banged. You don't come unless you bring a book. Where is book? I was saying, Where is book? So I said, My mother and uncle is running all over Europe saying, Where is book distributed? He's looking, Where are the book distributed? He's looking for that association because we'll find that those who are committed to book distribution, that their consciousness is very clear. They know what is Krishna consciousness. It means, Krishna consciousness means to please the spiritual master. And how will we do that? We'll distribute this. It's not that others are not pleasing Shiva Prabhupada, but those who are doing it, they definitely have a very close relationship with Prabhupada because unless we have that, we can't continue distributing books unless we take shelter and his fear is low to speak. Unless we are Guru Mokha Patnava Kesitete Kuriya Aikya Arna Kuriya Mariyasha Unless we are, unless our heart is one with his heart, what he wants, then we can't go on doing that. So those who are dedicated to book distribution, they, they, they have a special mood about them, that focus, that concentration, and that special mercy and bliss that comes 
from doing this. Yeah. It's uh, special uh, mood about the book distributors. I, I just like to narrate some time when, when I felt in my own life, when I felt what, more than any other time, Prabhupada's very, very clear blessing on me that uh, I was in Bangladesh at the time and uh, I've been, I used to be like put in different countries, that wherever. I would, I'd be like maybe six months here and six months there in, in Bangladesh and in Thailand and different places. Just wherever Prabhu Vishnu Maharaj sent me. Like twice it happened that he arrived in the morning and I, would, I was like the regional secretary and the BBT, everything. And then in the afternoon we both get on a plane and I'd have a new post of like news. I was pioneering things there, so you know, crises coming up here and there. So, um, so I'd been away from Bangladesh for some time, and then the, the devotees who were leading the mission there, they were going off on a tour of America to do Kirtan in the West. So I was, I came back for some time to, uh, oh, just kind of look, look out at our overseas things. And it was the monsoon, which we don't know what that is, but uh, unless you've lived through it. Even the monsoon in Gujarat, it's nothing compared to the monsoon. It's just a, it's a few showers, but it's a Bengal, very heavy monsoon. The, the, the whole country gets flooded every year because it's flat. So the whole place floods out and it's very difficult to go anywhere, to move anywhere. Everything becomes muddy and everyone gets sick and there's so many other floods everywhere. It's very difficult to do anything. So mostly that's why in Chaturmasya people just stay in one place, traditionally. So I was staying in one place in the capital city in Dhaka. After a couple of weeks, I got there. I don't know, I'm just sitting here for three months. I don't know. So I said, okay, we're going out with books. We're going out to distribute books. And they went, okay, after three months, no, we're going out. So it was crazy. It was ridiculous. I mean, we, we filled up these huge trunks. We were going out, and it was just constant pouring rain. But we'd go to different towns, and we'd just camp there. And we're trying to do some programs because the system was we did we did programs in the, of Kirtan and showing the cinema, Hare Krishna cinema, and people would come. So they were still coming in the rain and pe- people heard because they, there weren't any what they considered Hindu books in the country, hadn't been for years. So people were very eager to get them. So somehow or other we just had to get from place to place. And uh, we'd sit down in a temple, I mean a, a local Hindu temple, which is mostly Vaishnava temples. And we do some of we do some kind of problem, people would come and they'd pack in because they're pouring the rain outside again. And uh, this way we just, over three months, we distributed all the books that were there in the country at that time. We had to work out how to smuggle in a whole bunch more. So at the end of this period, I mean, it's very difficult, it's difficult to explain how. You know, you're traveling around and pretending to be a tourist when you've got these huge trunks of, I mean, massive trunks of, <laughs> And uh, anyway, it was, it was very difficult in so many ways. And then uh, at the end of that, uh, Prabhu Shumaraj allowed me to go to Vrindavan for the first time in many years. And uh, and then uh, just the first morning I was there in Mongolati, and I just, I, I uh, it just, it was, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but I, I felt very much that Prabhupada was uh, just showering his mercy on me. That, he was uh, very, very pleased. I could understand he was very, very pleased that uh, we'd taken the difficulty to go out there and, and distribute books, even though it was not a very possible situation to do it in. So uh, you can all experience this day by day in your lives, how there are so many difficulties involved, but if we keep on pushing, then definitely the, 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 the mercy, when we're giving out the mercy, and and the mercy is part of us. You may not even feel it all the time, but uh, there's no doubt that those who dedicate their lives to distributing proper books, that uh, they're going to get the result of Christian consciousness, which is going back home, back to Godhead. That I heard this when I, I first came to India in 1976 in my festival, and I, I didn't stay at that time, I went back, but 
the world is going on at that time. It's one of those Prabhupada sects. One of the people in a very general way. And we're all the day, every day, we're simply talking about with the communists. So, how are we going to remember Krishna at the time of death? And Prabhupada replied that if you just go and distribute in these books throughout your life, then even if you don't remember Krishna at the time of death, Lord Chaitanya will force his way into your mind and personally drag you back to God. So that's quotable. I don't know if Prabhupada actually said it, but it's a quotable quote nevertheless. So, what can I say? You're all great Mahatmas. I'm supposed to answer your questions, or there's supposed to be some discussion. <laughs>